Welcome to Inspire and Move, the show that inspires you to create, connect, and grow. I'm going to bring you meaningful conversations, aha moments, and all the motivation you need to up-level every part of your life. I'm Ali Aruda, founder of Inspire and Move, and your personal hype girl. I've gone from fashion school, to celebrity stylist, to corporate marketing, to brick and mortar entrepreneurship with my husband, each time learning incredible lessons how to pivot, reimagine, and implement the steps to become successful. I am passionate about inspiring others to live their best life, a life of joy. We have the power to design a life that we love because life is too short not to. The best part is that you weren't meant to do this alone. If you feel like you were meant for more, let me ride shotgun with you and together, let's get you to where you want to go. You guys, welcome back to the Inspire and Move podcast. I am so pumped and I feel like I'm still giggling because I am so excited for today's episode, but more so than today's episode, I am so excited for today's guest. She is someone who has been such a pillar in our community where like, I am now. We both have brick and mortar businesses down here and she low-key is like kind of a Burlington celeb that I certainly look up to when Matt and I moved to our city where we are now. And and that is Erin Weatherby of Kelly's Bake Shop. Big warm round of applause for my friend Erin. You're awesome. Thanks so much, Allie, for having me. I am so honored to be here and uh, yeah, just super stoked to just dive in. I'm so pumped. We were just having like high level chats before and uh, I just think there's so many amazing areas that we can take this conversation. But uh, typically I like to start so that, you know, all of you listening, if you don't know who Erin is, well, let's let's get to know her. So Erin, tell all of our Inspire and Move community members and friends a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I grew up as an only child. My uh, my parents separated when I was quite young, but I grew up in a very healthy household on both sides of my family. And, you know, I grew up in the 90s. So I was that kid who, you know, my friends would come over and I was that like hippie nuts and berries sort of like upbringing where my friends would come over and they would walk into our kitchen and be like, okay, where are the Lucky Charms and like the Eggo waffles? Because this like organic almond milk and like natural food, this is like the weirdest thing ever. But for me, it was totally normal and something that I've like brought through to my life now being 33, almost 34. So fast forward, I went to McMaster, got a degree at McMaster. And while I was there, my family opened up Kind Food and Kind Food was Burlington's first plant-based grocery store, juice bar, uh, bakery, cafe. Like we were everything. And this was back in 2010 before being vegan and plant-based and gluten-free and all this stuff was actually considered mainstream and considered cool. So back then we had naysayers like left and right saying, are you serious? Like, do you actually think that this is going to fly in downtown Burlington? Like, good luck. You guys have fun with your little business and like, it's, it's never going to work basically. So to, to, to their surprise, it did work. And, um, we ended up being so, so busy that the baking side of things just literally took off. And every morning that we were there, every horizontal space within the business was full of cupcakes, muffins, brownies, cookies, like craziness. And like the phones were ringing off the hook. Can you make a cake for my daughter's baptism? Can you give me 30 cupcakes today? Like it was craziness. So we just kind of looked at each other and said, okay, like, I think we actually need to open up like an actual location for the bake shop. And conveniently, we found a spot right on Brant Street, which for those of you that aren't from Burlington, it is right downtown Burlington on our main street of Burlington. And that's where Kelly's Bake Shop was born. So we opened in 2012 and we are a 100% gluten-free, plant-based, dairy-free, egg-free and peanut-free bake shop. And we literally have thousands of people that come to our, come to our shop every single week, which is so unbelievable still 12 years later. And we have about 30 staff too, that basically run the show day in, day out. And uh, yeah, won a bunch of awards. We actually were named on Buzzfeed's, you know, top sweet shops to visit in the world before you die too, which was pretty awesome. So yeah, it's been, it's been a beautiful journey these last 12 years. And that's, I guess, me in a nutshell for sure. (laughs) 
Oh my, I love this so much. And I kind of knew the, the story and the timeline, but can I just say how much I wish that I lived here when Kind Foods was like here and that I could go and shop there and order from there because it sounds so my jam. <laughs> And could you bring totally, it back? <laughs> totally. It was, it was honestly, it was such a great spot. Like still like looking back at it, I actually miss those days because we had like all of this like cutting edge, cool, organic, new age sort of like food and things. And it was just, it was such a vibe for sure. And like looking back at it, like I, I really miss those, those starting days for sure. It, it was beautiful. Oh, I love it. I'm so excited to dive into so many different angles about this. But I think also let's just have a little moment of like bragging rights for the bake shop that you guys have won some really exceptional awards. And I feel like this little mention of, you know, this bake shop to visit, like, let's talk about this for a second. Tell me all the goodness of these accolades that you've received, because that is not nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah, you know, like we've been fortunate enough to be awarded these kind of accolades and my mom and I, we've actually written a cookbook and we were a national bestseller with our cookbook on the Toronto Star and Globe and Mail bestseller list. Like I said to you, we were on the Buzzfeed, you know, top sweet shops in the world to visit before you die. We've actually won the tourism award too for, for Burlington, which is incredible like the it's funny it's a very funny story because apparently the tourism office says that more people come to the tourism office to ask about kelly's bake shop than the royal botanical gardens and if you're from you know this general vicinity you know that the royal botanical gardens is like quite a destination for tourists and stuff in you know hamilton burlington area so it was awesome to be awarded that as well too <laughs> Okay, so celebrating all of the success that Kelly's Bake Shop is and has just achieved along the way, let's talk about where you guys get your inspiration from because you have obviously built this remarkably successful business that is deeply rooted for how you've been brought up, how you live your lifestyle, which I totally want to have lifestyle questions, so those are coming. But I'd love to know as you know, women in business and female entrepreneurs, where do you get your inspiration from to run your business, to lead your team, and to just create new, exciting recipes and feature products, celebratory products that complement the different times of year, special occasions? Walk me through what that sort of inspiration journey looks like. That's, that's a great question. And I think like for, for me personally, I love surrounding myself with as much like education, as many books, as many podcasts of like leaders that I want to aspire to be. Um, so whether it's, you know, someone like an Alex Hermosi or Don Miller or, you know, Dan Martell or Ed Milet, like all of these wonderful, wonderful guys out there and, and girls for that matter. I just listed a bunch of guys, but um, a bunch of incredible <laughs> leaders that are in the entrepreneurial space. Um, that's definitely where I get my like leadership uh, inspiration from for sure. And then also to just seeing what other really big and beautiful bakeries are doing like predominantly in the States for sure, like a company like Sprinkles Cupcakes, a company like Milk Bar, those are two of like the most iconic brands in the States. So for us, it's like looking to see what they're doing because like they are a conventional bakery baking with eggs and butter and all that good stuff. And so for us, it's like, how can we reinvent our recipes to be more obviously allergy friendly, dairy free, egg free, that whole thing. So it's just looking and seeing what seeing what other great brands that you want to aspire to be are currently doing. Oh, I love that. And I love that you even started with, you know, getting a lot of inspiration from books and podcasts. And so I want to even just kind of stay there for a minute more as a leader and an entrepreneur. What does that even look like in your day or week at a glance in terms of how you're spending your time? You know, are you consuming that sort of positive propaganda on a daily or weekly basis? Yes, absolutely. I would say I, I love to listen to podcasts in the morning when I'm working out. That is like my my time to myself. It's my time to just absorb so much great wisdom and knowledge for my day. Um, I've been really on an Alex Hermosi and Layla Hermosi kick recently. I just love their energy. I love that they're a husband and wife doing business together. And so I've been on a kick listening to their podcasts, their vlogs, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, for me, definitely, uh, definitely a daily thing for sure. 
I love that you said the Hermores. Her oh my gosh, can't even say. I'm like, I love them, and I can't even say their last name. But with Layla and Alex, they've also Alex especially. I've recently been consuming a lot of his content from the gym ownership side of things. But I also love watching them as a couple in business and their wild and amazing success story. And this is even maybe a good opportunity to kind of sidebar about you and your husband, Michael, that you guys have been together for a really long time and you have a beautiful love story. And I would think there's some really great little nuggets that we can take away here if you are open and willing to share a little bit about your relationship and what makes your relationship so beautiful for being so young and have spent so much of your life together and even what that kind of has looked like in business as well. Totally. Yeah, for sure. I mean, so my husband, Michael and I, we've been together since we were 15 years old. So we met in high school and we have been together since grade 10, which is wild to most people. And for us, it's just, it's just normal. Like we are truly best friends. And I think the biggest thing that, cause people ask us a lot, like how, how the heck are you guys still together? It's been almost 18 years or I should say we're going on 19 years of being together, which is unbelievable. And for us, it's like, we just have this beautiful mutual respect for each other and this beautiful trust with each other. And we just each know that we have each other's backs and it's, it's just a beautiful symbiotic relationship, um, where, you know, couples that have been together since high school and a lot of people break up obviously, because you're growing and evolving as a human being. And I think we've each, we've each allowed the other person to grow and evolve. Um, and, but we've continued to grow together as well, which has been a really beautiful thing. Um, and we, we have worked together as well too. Michael was the face of our kind food brand, which then transformed into lettuce love cafe, but Michael was the, the voice and the face and all of that great stuff until we sold it back in 2017. And many people in Burlington know Michael as lettuce love cafe. And so, yeah, we, we've definitely worked together and worked through all of those kind of struggles and yeah, like it hasn't been beautiful and pretty all the time, but we've always just come back to that, like mutual respect and that mutual trust and that, that just ability to basically lock ourselves in a room and work through any of the shit that we are bringing up that day and just get through it and kind of move on. Like we, we don't hold resentment. We don't hold grudges towards each other. It's just pure and clean, which I'm so, so grateful for him. I mean, Hey, you, that's a wonderful takeaway. Just kind of saying how it is and just being really direct with the person that you are spending your life with that you love and care about and have this mutual respect for. And I feel like this is such a great segue to even go into working with your mom. Totally. And because working, working with family can be a very, very challenging thing. I know like you and Matt, obviously working together too, husband and wife and stuff. And it can be, it, it can be a lot because you, you bring your work home and sometimes you forget about your personal relationship too. And my mom, I have to say, she is one of the biggest inspirations in my life, her ability to push the envelope, to see a vision of something and to be honest and truthful. And sometimes, you know, to a fault truth. Um, is something that I truly admire. And I think one of our biggest testaments to our success as a partnership has been knowing each other's lanes within the business. Because when we first opened, when we first started Kelly's Bake Shop and Kind Food for that matter, we were basically on top of each other. We were doing the same jobs and that was leading to a lot of stress, a lot of frustration, a lot of arguing, a lot of fighting. And we had to bring in some experts to actually help us. Like we went to business therapy and business coaching and all of that kind of stuff to actually help us reset ourselves and say, okay, Kelly, you are good at X, Y, and Z. And Aaron, you are good at A, B, and Z. These are going to be your lanes. You can talk about them, like kind of work through them, um, but you're not going to be working at the same things together. And that has really helped us. And I think it set us apart too, because I really focus on the operations and the marketing side of the business, whereas my mom focuses more on like the finance and the visionary side of it. So it's it's, it's this beautiful symbiotic relationship that we have created as well too, which can also be a challenge. I mean, I'm 34, almost 34. My mom just turned 60. So we're also at two different stages of our lives as well too. And we've been able, we've been able to balance it and we've been able to manage it and to grow as well. Um, and just one last thing I'll say on that is being business partners um, ha has given us the opportunity to 
obviously be business partners, but remind each other and remind ourselves that we are mother and daughter first and always kind of come back mm -hmm. to that relationship first, because really at the end of the day, that is the most important thing. And during some of those kind of crazy, stressful times in the early days, we were forgetting that we were mother and daughter first and just being mad at each other all the time. But coming back to that and really focusing on that personal relationship has been really quite beautiful for the both of us. Well, I think that's excellent advice. And, you know, I'm curious to know, do you have times in your day or week that you have, you know, Kelly and Aaron, Kelly's Bake Shop business meetings, or if you have a, you know, brainstorming day, content creation day, but then do you guys go out for lunch, just mother, daughter, or go get your nails done and have separate mother, daughter dates? Totally. Yes. And and that's something that we've been getting better at as well, too. And I'll, I'll go up because Kelly lives about 15 or so minutes from me. So I'll go over to her house and go and bring our dog over and just go and hang out. And then there'll be other times that, you know, I'll go over there. She'll come over to my house or obviously we're at the business and stuff together, too, when it is more focused. Like, OK, now this is just a Kelly's Bake Shop focused vision meeting or marketing meeting or just, you know, goals and setting all of those wonderful um, targets and stuff for the business. But but yes, absolutely is setting that time like, hey, mom, do you feel like going for coffee this morning? Do you feel like going for lunch today? And just separating that business mindset, even though, I mean, we're business owners, there's always going to be business in your mind and you're always going to talk about it and stuff. But just setting that time aside, I think is so, so valuable to maintain the integrity and the strength of, of that personal relationship. Honestly, Aaron, that's excellent advice that I feel like I could even take for Matt and I that we, you know, not the same, but similar that you're in business together and we talk about our business all the time. I am literally brushing my teeth last night telling him about two exciting emails I got and then we talk about it 10 minutes before going to bed and then I couldn't sleep last night because my head's spinning. Where this morning I wake up and I'm like, why did I do that? Like, I should not have been talking to you about this. Like, it's exciting. I'm, I'm grateful for that but should not be having that conversation before my head hits the pillow and I'm trying to read, listen to a meditation and have a really great, you know, eight hour sleep to feel rested and rejuvenated to take on my next day. So I feel like that's great advice, but totally. I mean, I need to write this down. Work dates with my husband. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> All my takeaways. Okay. Now I want to kind of still go back a little bit into the business because we were, I mean, I feel like you and I just as friends and entrepreneurs in the beautiful roller coaster of life and business, we've had some good chats over the years that, you know, our business at Benchmark Fitness is much younger than Kelly's, but we both went through a very, we're going to call it a vibrant time, like a vibrant, turbulent time a couple of years ago. And I know that that like kind of beyond everything that was going on in the world and our city and all that, you and Kelly and the business, you had sort of like a, an extra turbulent time. We definitely did. And I think that that is the understatement of the century for sure. <laughs> Um, yeah. And, you know, obviously, like you said, Ali, like the last three, four years have been crazy for bricks and mortar businesses in general, from, you know, gyms like yourself not being able to operate to, you know, our business not being able to have like dine-ins and just a totally a very different way of operating that we didn't want to operate like that, right? Like we wanted to just operate our business the way that it was built and just rock it. But anyways, that's the past. But I think that if we can all get through that level of craziness, we can get through anything. So I think it's made us stronger for sure. But on top of COVID, we were the lucky winners of being a part of cancel culture, which was an unbelievable an unbelievable experience to put it very, very lightly. A small group of people with very, very loud voices decided to spread some false narratives about me, about my mom, about our business. And I can, I can really truly say that it was probably the worst time of my life. I like looking back at it now, obviously some wounds have healed. It's been almost four years now that when all this happened, but there were some moments and there were some days where I just, and it sounds terrible and morbid, but there were some moments where I just didn't want to wake up. Like it was, it was that raw. It was that painful because these lies and these stories and this craziness was just spewing out from this group. And I'm like, what are you saying? None of this stuff is true. Um, but, but looking back at it now, 
I I'm grateful for it. And I know like, it kind of sounds crazy to be grateful for it, but I really, really am because I know that I found the strength within myself to rise up, to be a better human being and to just reflect and say, okay, Aaron, you're never going to be hated on someone that's doing more than you. That's like the first thing, right? So you can always have haters. People are never going to be a hundred percent thrilled with everything that you're doing. You're always going to have jealous people. There's always going to be someone there trying to bring you down, which is sadly, you know, the state of the world. But I also do believe that the comeback is always stronger than the setback. And I was saying this to you, Ali, before we kind of jumped on here that, you know, through these areas and through these times of adversity is when we can rise up to be our best selves. And it's when we learn the most too. It's not through the times of success when you're riding high and everything's great and everything's vibing and perfect. It's like, no, during these times of real raw vulnerability and adversity and where you're like, oh my gosh. I don't want to, I don't want to continue on. I want to just close up our business and like move to Mexico or something. Cause it, cause it's that terrible. Um, that's where I think that you, you learn the most and you grow the most as a human being. So that's, yeah, that's really like the story of it. That's like the serious Coles notes version of it. If you want some more info, I can share some more info, maybe in a later podcast, <laughs> but, but yeah. it's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really grateful for it for sure. So, yeah. It's, well, first of all, thank you for sharing that. I know we sort of jammed quickly before hitting record. And I was like, do we want to go there? Like, I feel like it is a really character building. And so I appreciate that you you did, because I, I do believe that some of these adverse times, though, like they're not pleasant to go through, they can really build, you know, thick skin for us as individuals in our relationships and certainly for our business. And I think it's also easy. And I don't know if you feel the same way. That sometimes I really lose sight of, now I know we didn't go through the exact same thing when talking about like cancel culture, but, you know, going through these hard times that, you know, you don't want to talk about it too much to be like a Debbie Downer and really having that negative mindset. But there's like, how do we find this harmonious balance where, you know, no, but I did go through that and it was a real shitty time. I don't want to do it again. I learned X, Y, and Z. But on, you know, the other side, you want to give yourself that credit and sort of a pat on the back that you did go through those shitty times and how you handled it and how you showed up. You still had a business to run and a marriage to work on and be present in that you're going through this mucky time, but still having to kind of handle it with grace. And I feel like it is, is very easy for us sometimes to really try to focus on not being negative and talking about it too much but also forgetting to give ourselves the credit of actually going through that. Right, right, totally. And I think it's I, I think it's easy because I I'm the same way too, where I'm like, okay, it's fine, it's the past, like we're 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 moving on. But then you can kind of get into that space of almost like a toxic positivity where it's just like, oh, like everything's fine. Like, yeah, I I went through that, but I'm okay now. But why like why don't we allow ourselves to be vulnerable and authentic and just real of like, but that's part of our story, you know, like you and Matt at benchmark, it's like, yeah, going through COVID, newly purchasing a, a gym, you're like, yeah that's part of our story. And it made us stronger as business owners, as husband and wife, as leaders in the community, all of that stuff. So like, why can't it be like a raw and vulnerable part of your journey? And it doesn't have to always be this polished, beautiful, like what everyone sees on Instagram, this, you know, highlight reel of your life. Right. I think, I think people want us hear and see more of that rawness and that vulnerability and, and the, and the shit that, that you've had to go through as a human being, because everybody goes through their own their own stuff. And people want to know that you're also human too. And you've also been through your, your mountain of it as well. A hundred percent. And I heard this, uh, it's not really a quote, it's more of a reframe on some of these experiences in life from Jen Gottlieb. She's an author and speaker, and I've had the opportunity to hear her speak twice. And she's amazing. I also feel like I talk about her book all the time on the show. So I'll probably link it again, but she had talked about, you know, when going through traumas, let's call it, that sometimes you you have, you, you go through these traumas and you either have what is an open wound or a closed wound where, you know, something like maybe going through the pandemic in business, like now maybe it's a closed wound, but maybe something else is still an open wound. Like I know for me, the loss of my dad is still very much an open wound. 
I can talk about it a little bit, but not a lot because I'm still going to get emotional. So I can recognize, you know, what my kind of scale of strength to talk about that. For you with the cancel culture, cancel culture experience, do you feel like it would be an open wound or a closed wound? I think it would be it would be a closed wound at this point, gratefully so, because like I said, I'm I'm very grateful for the experience. I'm very grateful for the things that it taught me. Um, I'm very grateful for who it showed my actual like true friends were as well, too, because during that time, there were some of my friends who just said, oh, no, like I can't be involved with you anymore because you're part of cancel culture. And I'm like, what? Like, what? Do you not know me as a human being? So it, it showed me who my true, you know, friends and my true tribe really, really were as well, too. Um, yeah, I, I would definitely say it's 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 a closed wound for sure there. And you know what? At the end of the day, the, the group of people that decided to come after us are a small group that are very, very jealous. And, you know, I send them a ton of compassion and loving kindness because, yeah, I think that they're just an incredibly jealous human being. So, <laughs> well, sometimes people just love throwing stones at shiny things or throwing stones at things that shine. So good for you for, you know, just battling through that and getting to the point where it's a closed wound. So I applaud you for that, first of all. Thanks, Allie. <laughs> But second of all, I would love to understand, because I know you said, again, when we were chatting a little bit before, that it was obviously quite hard on you, well, probably mentally, emotionally, and honestly, probably physically, because if those two things are out of whack, then physically our bodies can really respond to that stress. Were there things that you, things or people that you really leaned on during that ch challenging season? You know, were you, did you have new habits that you picked up or non-negotiable habits that you really dialed into like what did that look like for you in terms of you know kind of like your self-care yeah yeah for sure um definitely i mean i i'm very very big into meditation and yoga i actually went to mexico back in 2016 and i studied to become a yoga instructor so that has been a very you know big part of my life so during those kind of challenging times definitely i lean on my practice i lean on my meditation for sure and that's something that i really remember during that time is taking like even just mindful walks in our neighborhood listening to a great message listening to a great kind of like empowering calming message um and yeah definitely getting back into my meditation getting back into my yoga practice um and and that's something that has always been a staple of my life but something that really has helped me get out of you know, a, a dark time, um, for lack of a better word, a dark time through going uh, through an experience like cancel culture, for sure. I love that. And are you still practicing now? Do you teach yoga anywhere? I don't teach yoga. It's more of a, like a personal thing. I, I did teach a few classes actually back when I got it back in like 2017, 2018, we actually did these like really, really cool events right in downtown Burlington where they like shut part of the street down. And there was a couple hundred people that like showed up and did a yoga class with me right out front of the bake shop. It was actually so awesome. And I think we should definitely bring it back because as I'm talking about it, I'm getting excited. So <laughs> I remember that. So just Okay, guys, you've heard it on the Inspire Move podcast first. There is going to be some sort of an event in the near future with like Ali doing some sort of class and Erin doing yoga. There's going to be cupcakes. There's going to be coffee or maybe actually skinny cookies. Maybe for a workout, we'll do the skinny cookies. It's a nice mindful, mindful snack. I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay, so now that we know that we have a future event together and that's going to be super rad and fun and everyone can get really, really excited about that. I want to chat more of like what's happening in the world of Kelly's Bake Shop right now. Cause I know at one point you guys were open, you know, planning to open a second location in one of our beautiful wine country areas, but then you had a bit of a pivot there. What's, what's happening? Yeah, great. So we, yeah, so we purchased a property back in 2019 out in uh, Prince Edward County and then COVID happened and we just said, okay, we just need to pivot and we need to shift gears. So we ended up selling that property in, gosh, what was it, late 2020 or early 2021? I can't remember the year, um, but we ended up selling that property and it actually went to like a really, really great brand that's out there in PEC. So that was good because we just felt that we really needed to focus on, you know, Brant Street location and 
make sure that everything was flowing and vibrant and thriving there because, you know, so many small businesses were having such a hard go of it. We really just needed to focus in and just focus in on our actual bread and butter and the actual money making, you know, business of Kelly's Bake Shop and make sure we could still pay our staff and pay our suppliers and, you know, serve our customers and stuff there. Um, so we pivoted there. We currently right now, we actually have a cookbook that's coming out. Our second cookbook is coming out in the spring of this year, probably around Mother's Day, which I'm very excited about. It's called Conscious Living and it's a hundred plant-based gluten-free recipes. And it's all about conscious living and just beautiful, like incredible recipes that I'm super stoked about. So that's coming out in the spring. And then we're also launching a really awesome new e-commerce website as well for Kelly's Bake Shop that is going to allow us to ship cookies and treats basically all across the country. So that is going to be massive for us. So we're aiming for that to be launched probably in the summer uh, by the time everything gets gets done. But that is going to be such an epic, epic launch. And I can't wait for it. <laughs> oh my gosh, Erin, congratulations. That's amazing. And I, I had a feeling there was something coming in the world of you know, products beyond just coming to visit the bake shop. And this sounds like it's going to be an incredible just success and celebration for so many of your customers that aren't local to where the bake shop is, but that love coming to visit you and taking your products to their homes and their family and friends. So that's really exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's going to be awesome and it's 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 amazing honestly how many customers we have that either email us or people that will actually fly from like Calgary and BC and Newfoundland and it's unbelievable that come to the bake shop or they'll they'll drive from Montreal or you know Toronto wherever drive for a few hours pick up a dozen cupcakes or a dozen cookies and turn around and drive home. So it's it's a beautiful thing to be able to serve our customers that are on the other side of the country now, which is so, so, so cool. So that'll be in the next few months. Um, and yeah, we're also working on a bit of like a different fun brand kind of offshoot from Kelly's Bake Shop that we're kind of working, working on that's going to be more focused on cookies specifically because we are noticing like a wild trend with our cookie sales recently that they are off the charts like people are ordering cookies three to one over cupcakes now when back in the day it used to be the reverse of that so i don't know what's going on in the world of cookies but people are loving loving them so we're, we're just going to keep on serving our customers with great great products <laughs> oh i love i mean i love a good cookie so this is it's positively received no, right? by me over here so i cannot wait to see all the the new what? recipes you guys come out with I don't want to do, like kind of skip over the cookbook component to your brand and that journey. So what is that? I mean, I know we've sort of touched on what it is like to work mother daughter, but writing a cookbook, you know, what has that experience been like for you, mother daughter, but also you like you, you're a young entrepreneur that is so accomplished and to have not one, but now a second cookbook coming out that touches on what really feels like maybe two different areas that you're really passionate about between these mindful recipes, but also mindful living and conscious living. What has this experience been and felt like for you? Mm -hmm. Well, writing a cookbook is honestly no small feat. I mean, writing a book in general is no small feat, but a cookbook with the recipes and the directions and making sure that the ingredients are accurate and you have beautiful photos associated with each one. It's like, it is such a labor of love that in, in some moments I'm like pulling my hair out. Like, why are we doing this? This is so crazy. Like, why, why are we spending all of this time on it? And then in other moments, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for the world to see this beautiful work of art that we have created. And that's really what I think about our books as now is just this beautiful work of art and kind of this, this moment in time of the both of us, right? And how, how we're feeling, how we're living, how we're, you know, experiencing the world because our first cookbook made with love was more of, you know, the recipes of lettuce love and kind food and Kelly's Bake Shop. And then this book is more of just, you know, beautiful juices and smoothies and amazing like plant-based entrees and beautiful desserts. And there's some in there from Kelly's Bake Shop too, but it's just more of a like lifestyle cookbook, which is kind of fun and different. Um, 
yeah, but it's, it's, it's been a really awesome journey, but a very <laughs> stressful one to say the least as well too. Um, so yeah, like I'm, I'm very, very excited about it though, for the second book to come out. It's, it's going to be awesome. Well, okay. Hang on. I have so many questions about this cookbook. What is the target <laughs> launch date? Yeah. I'm like buzzing with excitement. Target launch date for this cookbook. And is there a launch party or cookbook tour? Yes. Okay. So for our cookbook, okay. So let me just backtrack for a second because during this whole cancel culture craziness that we went through, this small group of people with loud voices, they decided to reach out to our book publisher who was Penguin Random House at the time, our book publisher. And they actually ended up getting our book deal pulled from us. So we, both of our books now are completely self-published within, you know, Kelly and I, which I know. So I know, Ali, you're like gasping right now. I know. So it's, it's honestly insane. So both of our books are now fully self-published and with, with all of that obviously takes a lot more of like the marketing and the planning and all of that sort of stuff on our part, because for Made With Love, we had more of a, um, like a, a, a marketing, um, you know, person and, you know, set up with all of these great like media gigs and all that sort of stuff. And we're lining up all of that stuff now ourselves just in a different way. So for conscious living, we are going to have an epic launch for the book that we're working on right now. And yes, I think a party is definitely in need. Kelly has been saying that she really wants to have a party too for it. So I think I'm going to, I'm just going to tell you that Allie wants a party too, and she'll be, she'll be totally into it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, yeah there's going to be a great launch for it, launch party, the, the whole shebang. And it's, it's going to be fantastic. Oh my gosh, you have so many voice notes coming your way after this discussion, just <laughs> FYI. <laughs> this is so exciting. It's awesome. Oh, it, it's it, it's honestly so exciting. So much. And I think I think that there's like some some really fun like collab things too that we can do too. And we yeah, we can we, we yeah, we can chat about it after this too, that we can we can really ramp some things up in a fun way. <laughs> Love that. Just so I feel like my head is like a little tilt over roll right now with all these things spinning through it. But also, like, I cannot skirt over the fact that somebody, people reached out to your publisher to have your book that was already on the shelves, like online, yeah. on shelves, at people's yes. homes. It's in our cupboard. I, I think I honestly yeah. was one of your first batch of purchasers. So I think mine's yes. also autographed, just FYI. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so they, like, I feel like I'm speechless. They reached out to your publishers and told them to cancel you, basically. It, it Exactly. Exactly. And the Coles notes version is yes, they reached out to our publisher with completely baseless, like zero proof, zero anything claims towards our publisher. And this was around the time where cancel culture was really, really ramping up. It was like June, July of 2020. And the world was obviously crazy at this point, but our publisher took the stance of, you know, being more of like a virtue signaler and just said, okay, yeah, you know what? We're going to not publish Kelly and Aaron anymore because they're, they're, they're bad people. But again, zero, zero proof, zero evidence, zero anything. They were completely baseless BS claims, um, 100%. And it's, it's unbelievable what some people can actually achieve, um, in, in a very negative, negative sense. So. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, that's got to feel like a real, you know, mm -hmm. gut punch in something that you're already, you're already going through shitty times that you're navigating and challenges, but that feels like a real cherry topper on that. So the fact that you are coming out of the gates strong on this and in a sidebar question, do you, did you have all the rights to your recipes and things that you and Kelly had written or any imagery? Yes. Yes. Everything 100% is our copyright. So yes, yes. Everything is totally ours, okay. which is, which is great. So it's all good. Yeah. You just get to add a little bit more um, time onto the timeline and uh, another layer of thick skin in exactly. this entire process. Wow. And exactly. do you feel like is handling that something... these times of adversity? That's it. <laughs> totally. 
do you feel like this is something that you and Kelly would use as just like extra ammo and just authentic raw honesty about what this process has been like when you you know at a launch party or on a book tour is this something that you would wrap up and include in your story surrounding this book I think it's definitely part of it for sure. Um, we, yeah, like, and you know, what's funny is that we haven't necessarily given ourselves permission, like each other permission to actually talk about it because it has been still pretty raw to us. And we've been like almost scared that it would happen again and that, you know, this group mm -hmm. of people would come out again, but I think it's really important to address it. And I think it's really important for people to know that, yeah, like this stuff has happened to a local business close to home and to really understand like the actual ramifications of this kind of terrible thing of cancel culture that it can have on people's lives and their livelihoods and their staff and their community and their customers and all of that sort of thing. So yes, I genuinely do think it's, it's something to discuss for sure in an eloquent, poised, professional way. Um, but, but something for sure that we could, we could address. Well, I'd imagine that, you know, if that's something that you and Kelly decide, you know, the way you, make decisions in your life and business and your relationships, you'll make it with grace. And if it feels right, then you'll share it. And my gosh, I'll be the, the first one to buy this book and to celebrate this book when it comes out. And I, I'm, I'm so excited for you kind of take all of that chaos and just really focusing on the bigger picture here that you have a second cookbook coming out. That's so exciting. And I cannot wait to see it and celebrate it. Yes. Thank you so much. And honestly, we are so much of like the future mindset of just like, we don't, we don't care about all that stuff that happened in the past. We are just moving forward onto like bigger and better and more fantastic things. So it's all, it's all good. I love that. And thinking kind of ahead to the future, like, are there, are there future collaborations that you would love to see in your horizons, whether it be, you know, on the personal brand side with the cookbook, with the bake shop, like the, are there brands that you would love to work alongside of? Ooh, that's, that's a good question. You know what? Like I haven't really, I haven't really thought too much about that. That's definitely some good like food for thought, Allie, because yeah, I don't, I often like, I often don't think too much about that because I'm so in the um, like narrow minded, for lack of a better word, or just focused in on like the day to day of the shop, the operations of the shop, what's going on, all that kind of stuff. But that's like, that's a great question. Do you, do you have any suggestions of anything that you think we could collab with, who we could collab with? Cause you're, you're, you are like the I master like of bringing people together, Ali. So. <laughs> well, I feel like there would be a really like high vibe aligned collaboration with Kelly Levesque. Ooh, nice. Yeah. I, I feel love like that. Kelly Levesque. I also feel like a Lauren Bostick skinny confidential could be uh, another great one that would probably love your story and go real deep on the journey of what that story is. I love that. Those are, those are great suggestions. That's fantastic. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep brainstorming on this one because this is cool. And I, I think there's so much power in, you know, having that creative, just sort of download time, that brainstorm time, and then really, well, we were even saying this before we hit record, like thoughts become things. So who are these people or brands that you would love to work with or, you know, doing a cookbook pop up at like a Williams and Sonoma or Pottery Barn that just like is a great brand that a lot of people love and shop from that you can be aligned with. And I think there you know, just is so much power to share. And I feel like people sometimes are weird about sharing things. And I don't know if you have anything, you know, that comes to mind in terms of in the world of entrepreneurship. I've even said this to Matt the other day of, you know, I don't know why people don't like talking about their numbers because I would be proud to say, okay, well, this is my really lofty goal that of revenue I want to make every month. We're not making this right now. We're not even close to making this, but this is the number I want to make. And then there will come a time where you put action steps into place and that you do hit that revenue number and why don't people talk about it? Totally. Totally. It's like, it's like, there's almost this like shame attached to it or this like guilt attached to 
like wanting to have, because the way I see money is like from a financially free sort of lens, right? That it's not about the money. It's just about the things that it can offer you, right? Having the ability to not have to work a nine to five and punch in and punch out in some you know job that you don't like. It's like having a business that you love and that gives you everything that you need and more. And you have a great team that surrounds you and, you know, life just flows with ease. Like to me, that's what, you know, having a good amount of financial freedom can can give you. So yeah, no, it 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 is funny that there is yeah a lot of um, hesitation with talking about it. And um, yeah, maybe we need to we need to change change that. <laughs> well, and that's one thing that Matt and I have really loved. You know, in this past year, we talk about it a lot on the show about getting in their room and investing in these rooms and events and experiences or mentors that you are naturally then in a room, you're in closer proximity of people that think the same way. They want to be action takers like you and high performers. Has that been something that either, you know, you, you and Kelly, you and Michael, is that something that you guys enjoy doing? Or, you know, are you, have you planned different things for 2024 on the map that you want to do in terms of events or mentorship, masterminds, anything like that? Yeah. So there's, there's a couple people that I would really love to hear speak recently that I've started following. Um, one of them is Don Miller and he's awesome. His, his whole business is building a story brand and basically creating, um, creating a message to your customers to transform them from point A to point B. And you as the business are the guide to basically help get them there. And it's just a really beautiful, uh, a beautiful approach to marketing and simplifying your marketing. And he has has a couple cool masterminds that are coming up very soon that I would love to kind of jump into. I think a couple of them are more virtual, which is great. Um, and then there's another company, uh, Brand Builders Group with Rory Vaden, and he's awesome. He's all about building your personal brand and kind of stepping out of you know your business into more of that personal uh, persona and and digitizing your reputation essentially, right? And and he has some really cool stats that I um, was listening to a podcast of his and he said more people are, more people will trust a brand with an actual human being that is like the face of the brand because you see some businesses that kind of seem like they're more soulless, right? They don't, they don't have a human being behind them and, and you're not as likely to trust them because you don't know the actual person behind them. But when the person behind the business actually steps out, customers are so much more likely to actually trust them and to purchase from them and to invest in them and all of that great stuff. So those are, those are two guys that I've been following recently, um, that I like that do have a couple of events coming up, um, but nothing planned per se, just kind of put, putting the feelers out there. Oh, I love that. It's something that I've come to like really look forward to on our calendar or that we now will look at, you know, the sort of six months ahead you know, in 2024, halfway through kind of already getting ideas on the map of what do we want to invest in in 2025? That is just something that I think really helps keep that momentum and this this entrepreneurial pep in our step of what rooms can we get into next? Who can we learn from next? And I know we chatted a little bit about, you know, podcasts and books, but we've, before we kind of wrap things up, I'd love to even know as a successful, high-performing entrepreneur, what does your morning look like? And sometimes I feel like the word morning routine can be hit me a little tainted because your days might look different, but from a general standpoint, you know, what does a, a morning with Aaron at a glance look like? Love it. Love it. So, um, so we actually moved a little bit up North. We're actually just kind of South of Collingwood now. So I go down to our business a couple times a week. Now we have an incredible team that runs things 99% of the time. And then I just go in there and just go and do my thing when I'm down there. Um, but usually I wake up around five. That's kind of my magic time. I love the mornings. I mean, being in the bakery business too, you kind of have to love mornings and early mornings. So I love waking up early and that is my time where I do meditation, yoga, 
my workout. Um, we have like a decent little home gym in our, in our house here. It's not nearly as great as benchmark, but it does, it does the job for sure. And then between, between like seven to 10, I would say that's like my power time where I love working. Like that is when I get my biggest things done on my to-do list and like my most priority items. That is when like my mind is the sharpest is at that time of day. And I give myself that time. I honestly, more often than not, we'll put my phone in another room and just like set myself a timer and work for a couple hours because I, I'm so dialed in at that time. And then maybe I'll go take our dog for a walk on one of our trails close by here, listen to a couple podcasts. And then, yeah, afternoons are more like meetings and, you know, virtual meetings, in-person meetings if I'm if I'm at the shop and stuff too. Um, yeah. And then have dinner, hang out. And honestly, I'm in bed by like nine o'clock. I am like asleep more often than not by nine o'clock. That is like I am early to bed and early to rise. That is that is the name of my game for sure. <laughs> Well, I love that. And I like how fascinating that 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. is your, would you say that's like your, your flow state? Like that's when you're really like in flow with everything. 100%. Like I can, I can work for three hours in the morning there. And I swear I get more done in those three hours than if I could work for like a 12 hour day. Like I would get way more done in that three hour time frame. It is unbelievable. The amount of work that I can I can accomplish. So yeah, for sure. Definitely flow state. <laughs> oh, I love that. Okay. Well, I love like a lot of things about this just conversation and I'm so excited about our event together when you're going to do yoga and I'm so excited about the new cookbook and the launch party. <laughs> it's going to be great. Like I feel like Kelly might even be like, you know, dancing on tables. I'll be dancing alongside with her. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> You can tell her I, I said it. that. I love it. I am so, so stoked. I'm, I'm so stoked too. I just love that that we've planned all of these events through the course of the last, what, 45, 50 minutes. It's it's great. <laughs> I'm going to wear pink. I'm, I'm like sitting here shoulder shimmying with my microphone. So it's, it's going to be a vibe. I love it. <laughs> so now we have all these things to look forward to. And you've also said that you're down at the bake shop a few times a week. So I'll just, you know, come and lurk you there so I can see more of you in person. Is there anything that you would like to leave with our, our audience, our listeners, our community before mm -hmm. we wrap things up and also want you to share where everybody can find you? Great. Um, I would just say, you know, do do something that that brings you joy because honestly life is so short and i mean it's flying by for me i'm sure it's flying by for everyone else and just do things in your daily life that really really light you up surround yourself with incredible people incredible friends incredible family and just live your life to the absolute fullest for sure and where people can find me. You can find me on Instagram at Erin Weatherby. You can find our bake shop. It's at Kelly's Bake on Instagram. And yeah, that's that, that's basically it. You can get everything you need from, from those two little sources. And yeah, thank you so much, Allie, for having me on. It's been an honor here to hang out with you for the last little bit. And uh, I'm happy we got some, got some good content and it's great. <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's so good. And we'll link everything in the show notes so people will have quick and easy access to those links. And if you are in the area or not, if you want to, you know, take a plane, helicopter, maybe drive a couple hours to visit the bake shop, you will not be disappointed. And fun fact here, when Matt and I moved to Burlington and we found Kelly's Bake Shop, we used to go every Sunday, I think for about a year or a year and a half, every Sunday. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Were you part of like Lori's, Lori's crew there on Sunday evenings? Oh yeah. 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 Like I remember when, when Matt and I walked in and then we were on first name basis, like we looked over <laughs> our shoulders like, Oh my gosh, she knows our names. Like we are regular status. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's fantastic. I don't know if anyone like for anyone else listening that you can really feel like when you go into like a bake shop, a coffee shop, and you are greeted by first name, like that is a win. Yeah, totally. A hundred percent. And that's honestly, I will just say that is something that we really, really strive for at Kelly's too, is to create an exceptional experience every single time someone comes into the shop. So one of our veteran staff, Lori, who has been with us since day one, she is absolutely incredible. And yes, she knows most of our customers' names, which is unbelievable. So naturally she knows Allie and Matt too. <laughs> 
She also said that our engagement story is a all time Kelly's like favorite. It is. That was also totally. nice. I learned that not too long ago. Totally. She honestly had been telling that story for, for years and years and years. It was actually before I feel like I even knew you, like I actually had met you in person. She was like, yeah, you know, like our, our regulars, Matt and Ellie, they, they got engaged in Paris and it was so romantic and Matt is such a sweetheart and this and that. I'm like, oh my gosh, Lori, it's so good. <laughs> Maybe I should bring Lori on the show. We can, you know, have a, like a three three-way interview with Matt and we can talk about the engagement story. So everyone we knows what we're talking about. We should. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, I love that so much. And I have so much love for you and your mom and everything that you guys are doing and that you've been through. And I just wish you so much love and success. And I'm so excited to celebrate you and all of that along the way. Thanks, Allie. You mean the world to me too. You're such a bright light in our beautiful, beautiful world, beautiful community. So thank you for doing what you do too. Oh, thank you. And you guys, if you love this episode as much as I did and I do, I would love if you would, you know, drop a little, drop a little review, share it to your socials, share it with a friend and tag Aaron, tag Kelly's Bake Shop and let us know what was a big takeaway for you. We would love to know and just see you in the DMs. And thank you so much for listening and we'll see you again soon. Thank you so much for listening. If you love this episode, it would mean the world to me if you took 30 seconds and shared this on social media, send it to a friend, or leave a five-star review. There is power in community, and I am so grateful to have you part of mine. 